drive, and he's backed up there. Luke McKenzie was almost apologizing. Anyway, it's been sort of simmering for the best part of the afternoon. And a three-quarter time after what was an outstanding quarter of football for those people who like it, blue-collar and tough and all those cliches. It was certainly all of that. 13 points the margin, Sydney on top. And still the West Coast Eagles with a chance. They'll be going with the breeze as we go down to Jude Bolton. Yeah, boys, uh, certainly uh, West Coast sub Jeremy McGovern during that quarter. Matt Rosa we saw with that right shoulder. He'll start on the bench this quarter. You're certainly favouring it uh, during that one. Just I uh, watched uh, a little bit of a few of the entries of the West Coast during that quarter. They fought so hard. I just felt at different stages they just needed to kick to advantage. We see the kick from Hutchings here was just to a 50-50, allowing Ted Richards a great spoil. But just uh, just needed to have a little bit more composure with their entry. Maybe just hit, hit a shorter target. They just kicked long, bombed it in a little bit there. But Adam Simpson be filthy with that late stoppage goal to Ben McGlynn. Generally in this game, the Eagles got the late goals. One seconds before quarter time, another two seconds before half time. Back out to 13. The West Coast Eagles showing a lot of grit. And Sydney, as we know, a lot of class and grit. No trouble either. Way right to the pack, Darling. Soccer's off the deck, goes down towards half forward. Lacroix. Need a bit more from him. Hearn following up. Sock is inside the 50. Cunningham heads for the boundary under pressure, and the umpire says, throw it in. Boys, Rose has taken the jumper off, and he's just got the jacket on, so he won't take any further part. Well, that's really bad luck, isn't it, for West Coast? One of their really influential players in that third term. We mentioned how many times he had the footy as the run was coming, and now. They're going to have to find another run without him. Smith, McKenzie just ducking into the Buddy tackle. Lowered the shoulder. Buddy did nicely. Got it across to Kennedy. Up the line, stays in. This will be interesting for Schofield now. He got rid of Reed. That was clever. And he goes back down the line. Tough one here. Rampy up high. Bird read that well. Great tackle, McGinnity. And got him holding the ball. Pushing right up here, West Coast. They need to play courageous football, not so much in the sense of putting their head over the ball, but their ball use and their defensive positioning. Opening goal of the last turn. What a lift it would give them. McGlynn again, he's been terrific. Smith, Wellingham got a hand in there. Darling, no mark as a result. Would have heard that call needs to make an attempt. Up it will come inside 50 for the West Coast Eagles, pressing to start this final turn. 13 points, Sydney's lead. We've played 90 seconds. Season on the line for them. I doubt they could make the eight if they lose today. Parker into unexplored territory. Nice weaving run as he came away. Now, this man is about 25 metres clear and no one behind him. But a very good result for the Swans. Beat him out of bounds. Players pushing up today. It's a day for it. Vacant forward lines. Throwing in lies set and Pike. Pike effectively worth a kick. Now a chance for Jack. Brandon Jack, a left footer. Butler didn't seem to realize that. Ball floats down to the pocket. Not a good kick. Ellis playing one of his best games this afternoon as an eagle. Although doubt the wisdom of the kick. Right to center half back. In trouble is Darling. Jen has got him. That's got to be holding it. Oh, gee, an eternity. Well done, though, by Jack to get boot to ball. He was nimble and quick. Across the 50 with the run of it. McVeigh confronted there by Shepard. Well played by Gath. Got it back to Shuey. Bounces one up towards the wing. Oh, brilliant by Hearn. Gave it to Marston. Marston to no man's land. Peeling off Richards. Consummate defender. Reminiscent of Tom Harvey. He knocks it out of bounds. He, then he was nimble and he was quick, but that was holding the ball. So, uh, it was well, a, that came was, after holding the ball. It was certainly... <laughs> Incorrect disposal on the top of what should have been holding the ball also. So Cox up in front. Still they press the West Coast Eagles. Kennedy. Wellingham. Good tackle by McVeigh at the back on Prittis. Wellingham got it again. Shepard. He's tried very hard today. Tough ball. McGinnity loves it there. Oh. He did pull the ball back in and somehow got it out to Shannon Hurd. Interesting. Now Schofield, a long ball, the crowd, the target again. Well done up in front, Grundy. One down towards 
Cunningham and then the clearing ball out from Jack. McGlynn who's been in everything but the kick not so good. Schofield over the football, he dived over it, no whistle from the umpire. Comes out Jack's way, McGlynn, can he get around Wellingham? Did brilliantly, it was Brandon Jack that started it all off. And now Jetta, long ball down inside 50. Well, they've been the main event all day. And that time, they fight a draw as the ball bounces over the line. Has been a great contest. Let's have another look at it here. There's certainly a fistful of jumper there from Buddy, and there's an armful of body there from McKenzie. So it's a nil old draw, and the ball goes out of bone, out of line. Parker, third man up. Hearn, full chested at the foot. He's in it. Big second half. Bird, loves it tough. Cunningham short. And Parker. He is just developing by the week, this guy. Luke Parker. Man on the mark, 40 minutes from goal. And a snapshot of what makes McGlynn so good just moments ago. Almost impossible to tackle. Wellingham had him dead to rights. And he charged through. Just broke the attempt to tackle. Going at his second, Parker. He's got the carry. Now that does hurt. Terrific effort. So tell us about his background, Tom, Luke Parker. Well, he was a fantastic junior. I was led to believe he won nine best and fairest as a junior, played to the level every time and was seen as a steal by the Swans and just looks a Swans-type player and he's having a fantastic career. So this equals their biggest lead of the game now. Bird gets the football out. Guess who? McGlynn oh. long down towards the 50. Rowan, he's been busy. Reed over the top for Lloyd, who sends it back down towards... Those two again, Buddy Franklin, good support this time from Brennan. McKenzie might have been out of that contest too, so he needed it then. And Cox, is that a mark? Umpire blows his whistle. Quick one up the line. Trips has had it a long time. He goes short. Gaff, so 19 points. Right there, mate, you're on it. Quarter of an hour to play. Oh. It would take their very best from here, the West Coast Eagles. Some promising signs, though. Mentioned earlier, they fought back in the Derby last week. They were down and hit the front in the last term, and they've shown plenty of ticker here. Hearn, that was a great mark. Darling at his feet. Didn't really want it there. Tough ball, Bird. He did that nicely. Oh. And what a good kick from a Glenn, but not sure that it was the required distance from Kennedy. Pretty sure it wasn't best. <laughs> yeah. Lloyd comes across the ground to Smith. Smith lowers the eyes. Parker, look at Jack take off. Kieran Jack is the man. If he can move the ball to him, he can't initially. Comes to Lloyd, who stumbles. Comes back to Parker. The moment is gone for Jack. The kick goes inside the forward 50. Working his gaff. Tries to paddle it in front. Coming across the path there of Ellis. And doing very well was Lloyd to hold it up. Now Jack is back in the action. Trying to cut his way through. Hand passes across to Bird. Bird gets onto this one. Down towards full forward goods. got to lose some against quality but it's a bad time to lose that one he's kicked two in his record breaking game more games than any other indigenous player 341 today just get the feeling he's building towards a powerful final series and he puts a throw west coast on their knees Well, the matchup of the day has been Eric McKenzie and Lance Franklin looking at the stats there. Not much in it, so on those numbers you would say Eric McKenzie's got the chocolates, but he's had eight tackles leading all comers for the Swans and demonstrating his defensive work, but it's McKenzie the better. Scoring at McKenzie's way, Tom. Yeah, just, I think, Baz. Defender gets the nod. No surprise. I think he has just won that duel, but he's been good, though. And McKenzie, well, he... Close to the best player on the West Coast Eagles list. Now, Cox in a lot of pain just off this contest. He reached for the back of his neck. And again, that's interesting for the game's record holder. He appears to be in a lot of pain and still just can't get himself involved. Meanwhile, ball forward in the goods direction. Schofield will be happy for the siren to ring now. Rowan did brilliantly. Jetta even better. And McGlynn, well, he's been superb. Why wouldn't he kick another goal?
Yeah, Dean Cox just got a little bit of a stinger right on the right arm there on the shoulder. He's just pushed forward at this stage. Uh, was in a bit of discomfort, but he's all right now. One down by Lacey. Parker. Laidler. Growing in stature, Laidler. Played at Geelong, played at Carlton. Not a lot of football, just a handful of games. Not even a handful at Geelong. A few more at Carlton, but has found a home with Sydney. Prittis heard the voice, missed the target. Parker, elusive, and he missed the target. Wellingham off the ground. Laidler worked back into the contest well. Wayward kick, that was touched. Ellis, well, I'm not sure we got the call too early, and as a result, the umpire, very compassionate, across quickly. Reed, a strong tackle, got him down. Umpire wastes no time. Over the top, Parker, third man up. He got his fist to that. Look at Parker's numbers. He's had a big game, hasn't he? 29 disposals, 19 of them contested. Live ladder. So, as we said at the outset, the Swans playing for top spot. They'll be a game clear now at the end of round 16. And as Dan mentioned, Tom, they do look the team to beat. Yeah, no doubt about that. And they may be able to set themselves up to give them some of their prime moves a spell going into the latter couple of rounds. Bird, a kick out of the congestion. Offline. Such a strategic approach to uh, premierships these days. It's get enough wins to make the top four, and if you can get enough wins to make the top two and give a bit of a spell to your really heavy lifters throughout the year just to make sure that you are in the best possible condition come September. This is harmful too if West Coast thought they had a chance. The rain is really coming down now. Parker, what a game he's played. Bird ditto inside the forward 50. Reed goes after it. Spills across to Butler. Ellis too long. Ball jarred out of there. Kennedy got it from Reed and hangs it out and misses. So it looks like a win for Adam Goods today. Celebrating game number 341. Passing Andrew McLeod 340, Michael O'Loughlin, a Sydney man 303, and Gavin Wanganeen, one of the greats of all time in my book on 300. Lloyd into Prittis, Shuey in trouble, Hutchings, now Ellis. A clearing kick from the former Hawk, it's back towards the line, Cripps the late inclusion. It's been lively, particularly early, faded from the game a little bit. Done okay. Yeah, Scoreline of 33 points probably doesn't do West Coast justice today, particularly during that second term and the very early going in the final, Tom. Yeah, there have been some positive signs, but I think the class and the grunt of the Swans come to the fore in this last term. Glenn had a lot of the football. Hutchings has tried hard as well. He kicks the ball inside 50. Grundy, Kennedy. He's exhausted as Josh Kennedy of the West Coast Eagles. Lead after lead in heavy going. Hasn't been his day. And he'll probably have a case to answer on Monday. I'm just talking about those numbers. And Gavin Wanganeen at 300 and those above him. As this boundary throw-in takes place. Lies set. And Pike. Parker. <laughs> well done. That was a difficult split in 10 pin bowling parlance. It comes up towards the wing, and the mark is taken by Butler. Interesting that two Indigenous Australian Football Hall of Famers, Graham Farmer and Barry Cable, had a heck of a lot of football. And there's Rampy rampaging across half back, searching kick to the outer side as if on cue. Goods. Now, Polly played a total of 356 for East Perth, Geelong and West Perth, and Barry Cable, 382 for Perth, North Melbourne and East Perth. And both of those guys are a lot of state football as well. But the club games in Western Australia don't count as Brandon Jack takes a mark about 30 minutes out. Interesting because Barry Robram is a legend of the game. He's in the Australian Football Hall of Fame. But he didn't play in Victoria, so does that mean no games, Barry, <laughs> alongside his name? Yeah, it's an interesting debate. I'm certainly not taking anything away from Adam Goods and his 341 games, no, but that is a, a lot of great footy from uh, Cable and Farmer, that's for sure. Good kick. Brandon Jack just misses. And Goods might well be a legend before it's all over and in there with them. Well, you're on the selection panel. 
stepped in for the Australian Football Hall of Fame. Inopportune time to bring that up, Tom. You <laughs> no. could get me in trouble. Actually. No, no, no. I've just, just gone oh, off on a bit of a tangent. No, but the, 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 I guess the discussion point is that you're um, difficult to assess, isn't it, when you when you go back Absolutely. to state league football? Yeah, very tough. Out of bounds, and we'll have a throw in, but Barry and all measure played over 400 games if you take in the state ones. It's not a comparison, it's just an observation. Uh, Adam Goods, he's a modern marvel. Three decades he's played. Tony Lockett played in Sydney's team on the day that he made his debut. Round one, 1999. That's how long he's been playing his trade for and at the highest level. Up in front, Mel Chesky from the Lacroix kick. And mopping up McVeigh. They've been terrific. McVeigh's kick not the required distance this time. Interesting interpretation. We've seen a few different versions of it from the umpires today. Pike back to McVeigh. Shepard, his gang tackle at the back. Lloyd, Brandon Jack in front. And up it will come again. Well, the way the number's really starting to tell now. 62 inside, forward 50s is Lewis Jether. He's had a fantastic game himself. 62 inside, forward 50s to 48. 27 scoring shots just to the 13 of the West Coast Eagles. Cox looks to be okay. Now down to Prittis. That was well done. Wellingham. Malcheski. And Cripps, I think, has given him a little nudge in the back. So a free kick for Malcheski, who's he's tried really hard as well. 20 disposals, 21 now. What a great kick. Ellis on the bounce towards the wing. Missed by Smith's fist. Well, he got a little bit on it. And Darling did very well with Buddy right there with him. Cripps trying to keep it alive for Kennedy of West Coast. He lost the handle on the football. Grundy was in there hard. Malcheski again kicked towards midfield. Rowan cleverly done to Kennedy. That was brilliant. Just a little tap and on the lead. Goods can't mark this time. Reed, how's the pickup? Can he get away from Schofield? Not really. Handball's back towards Kennedy. And now McKenzie a high ball. They're not out of trouble here yet. The West Coast Eagles. Rowan, Kennedy, back towards the line. Tough one for Shuey. But he read it well, waited, and the kick was OK. Josh Kennedy up to 25 possessions. Most of them in tight, body to body. Just a terrific player, too. I mentioned his streak before. He plays tough. So to survive for 121 consecutive games, don't miss a game in all of that streak. Started at Hawthorne, continued at Sydney. It's just amazing. He's exactly the type of player that if given the opportunity, a spell would be great, I think, leading into September. Not that he, I mean, he's so durable and those numbers back that up, but just a little fresher leading into September. Yeah. What an improved player. Inside the forward 50. Thumped out again. Kieran Jack, the skipper, went to ground. Franklin went back the other way, just being perverse. Missing it was Ellis. Back healed by Josh Kennedy of the West Coast Eagles. That was clever. Laidler goes down towards full forward. Back goes McKenzie. He fell over. Goods, a half chance. Couldn't believe it. He's got three goals. And on a day like today, that's worth about five or six. Interesting. Ball to the line of Rampy, who's had a good game as well. Just takes it over and hands it back to the boundary umpire. Swans are up to 179 contested possessions. Before this, they had, had 173 in the Geelong game, so that's the most contested possessions they've had this year. Gaff going to ground. They need to be careful there. There's Kennedy again. He's been a real warrior in these conditions. Conditions for Warriors. Jack sends the ball forward, and Ellis. A good mark on his chest. Maybe his best game as an Eagle Bass. You've seen more of them than I have. I've been impressed with him today. Yeah, would be very close. Drives it to midfield. Not his best kick there. Cunningham had to wait. McGinley came over the top. Jack missed it. Butler grabs it. Nobody inside the forward 50. So it's a race back. Darling assessed it very well. Into the park of Lysette. He slipped over. Over the top comes Richard. Still Lysette with the football. Tries to give it to Lacroix. Lacroix finds it. Melchewski. That was brilliant, Melchewski. Kept his eye on the footy. All he was interested in was stifling that hand pass, and he succeeded. Scott Lysette. 
A lot of talk about Lysette being left out of the team for the Derby. Across to the man who he was left out for, Cox. Obviously no bad feeling. <laughs> Cox are behind. Tough one to know now how the West Coast Eagles play that as well. Obviously, Dean Cox coming towards the end of a, a glittering career is the game's record holder. Interesting, too, that both clubs with their game's record holders out on the park. It happened last week here as well, Tom, with Fremantle and Matthew Pavlich. Doesn't often happen. Two weeks in a row. Both clubs' game's record holders. Kick not good. So there's still a chance here, West Coast. Darling trying to break through, and then he was looking for a runner, and there was not a runner coming. McGinnity, Kennedy, well he wasn't a runner, but he's a finisher. He kicks the goal. Strength by Darling to stand up there. That's a good snap by Kennedy. Gives him 38 goals for the season. A couple of big hauls too, 11 and 7. Play Fourth on. player taken play in the draft of 05 by Carlton. Involved in the Judd trade. Hutchings off the ground, standing his ground, Melchewski. Nellis comes up and takes it to Gaff. Cox on the move for him. And as a result, Gaff looked back inside and then just kicked in home. Sometimes he needs to just trust his instinct and try and deliver the ball because he's a very good kick. Bird towards the wing, rowing up high. Arriving quickly is Jack. Jack quite content just to push it across the line and have a throw in, and Jack keeps walking. Just watching Gary on this. When you're at the top of the table, like the Swans are, there's so much competition for spots. He's come into the side as a late replacement for Tippett, so he's got a number of weeks now to really press his claim for a finals berth. 28 points, Sydney's lead. This last quarter must feel now as though it's taking an eternity for the West Coast Eagles. After giving so much cheek, Adam Simpson's men improving, but not getting the wins and not getting the wins against top eight opposition. And in the end, that's what counts. So the Gold Coast victory here a few weeks back. The one shining light for the West Coast Eagles in this season. Interesting reading, really, their form line. A one and seven record against top eight teams. The only win against the West Coast. Their percentage of 72 against top eight teams. Against the bottom 10 teams, a five and one record and a percentage of 182. Well, this is what the Swans have got to come. And uh, I guess when you've won 11 straight, you probably go into favourites, in as favourites in the Hawthorne game on a Saturday night at the MCG. Looms large, doesn't it? So we give them the win here and then against Carlton next week who had a good win today the Blues incidentally they'll be going to equal a club record of 12 three times they've done it in Sydney's history the last time back in 1935 it's probably where that Bloods culture really bubbled away Tom yeah they won the flag in 33 broke the 72 year drought in 2005 but obviously a very good side in the early 30s bats Tom Harley, your chosen subject is football history. Mm. You've asked me about it. I was there. <laughs> First I didn't. I didn't want to say that. There's Gaff. Who there played well that day? Uh, <laughs> How did you call them? I was under a brolly. In those days, you could bring brollies in. I couldn't see as well as perhaps I should have. <laughs> I'm glad you weren't under a brolly, seeing as that cheeky. We've got a boundary throw. Now we've got a ball up. It's taken by McVeigh. Hurriedly, better works hard forward. Ah, Ellis stood up in the tackle. Well done play by on. Shuey. Master, high ball, a floating ball. Laidler missed it. Kennedy missed the target. McVeigh goes after the footy, takes it near the boundary line. Well, he's a good player as well, isn't he, McVeigh? Parker, run off his personal best. He's on 31 at the moment. Trying to hack his way through his butler. And Butler did it. Butler comes again. Always good to have a Butler around. Long ball down towards Darling. He waited for it on his chest. Rampy gives away the free kick. Ben Tyler's those key forwards for the West Coast Eagles. It hasn't come in with any real fluency whatsoever, but Darling and Kennedy, McGovern was subbed off, but no doubt that's a free kick over the shoulder from Dane Rampy, who has also had a really strong game for the Swans. He's trying hard today, darling. He's kicked a goal, 16 disposals. This will be number 17. He's worked up and down the ground tirelessly. 
And we've seen his speed on display with a goal that he kicked earlier, 23 for the season. So a real contributor and spending more and more time in the midfield. Distance, he had it in him, but just in these conditions, struggling for a little bit extra and offline. We well, mentioned the uh, results from the West Coast Eagles against top eight sides and bottom ten sides and suggestions they are flat track bullies and they've been beaten by a better side here, but they've got young key forwards to build a side around. They just need to have a bit more fluency and direction with which they direct the ball inside their 450 to give them a chance. Run there, park at the big leap. Close to the boundary line, McKenzie stays in, McVeigh, Parker, good evasion, so that's a PB now as he sends it down to tower forward, after it goes Schofield running out of space, sweeps a hand pass to McKenzie, had a good game to Butler, he'll go across the ground to Hearn, clock is running down inside the last two minutes of this one. And Hearn for Darling again, tough one for him, Richards right there. Well, two black belts as it turns out then one with a black belt in defense and one with a black belt in judo good contest fisting away from behind marston in front who started this game really well the spoil from a glenn who's been outstanding and hutchings to hearn to shepherd marston's first term outstanding they did sit on him a little more closely after that and he struggled from that point here's brennan got it from ellis long one melcheski big fist in the smith direction his game's been very solid as well, as has Birds. Long ball towards the wing. Kennedy in front. Schofield at the back. Prittis did well, and he was pushed as he got rid of it. In the back, Two the black belts. Has Jack got one, and Jack, Jack In judo? Mm. Yes. Mm. You're talking about Jack then? Yes. Oh, I thought you were talking about Ted. <laughs> well, Ted and... Oh, you joined them together. Ted's Two got, black belts. Ted's got one oh. in defence. You ordained that earlier. Oh, oh, I see, I see. You should listen to your good lines then. <laughs> <laughs> uh, heard him <it> before, Baz. <laughs> After it goes McGinnity, Marston smothered. I suppose that's a rumour Jack Brad just put on the street. We don't know. We haven't seen him wearing it. Coming through midfield. <laughs> You'd do that, would you? It goes down the road hard forward. Going back is McKenzie. Fires it out. Ellis did well to control that ball. He's dragged down. In goes Brennan. Stolen away by Lloyd, last seven seconds. It'd be nice if he kicked the goal here, Lloyd. Sends it towards full forward, it runs on and on. Across the line, final siren. And a gritty victory to Sydney. They win by 28 points. They win by 13 at three-quarter time. So they gave us the big finish. The West Coast Eagles now with their season all but gone. 10-19-7-9 at Patterson Stadium. get a few more games away and try and set the bar a little bit higher for the next boat. <laughs> 11 straight now for the Swans. Uh, how well is the team travelling? Today was a good, really good test for us over here in Perth. This is a real slug out here with the conditions and obviously to lose Zach Jones early, I thought the boys really digged in late and uh, to get a win like that was fantastic. And especially the guys around the ball, McGlynn, Parker, they were terrific, weren't they? Yeah, it's perfect conditions for those blokes. They're hard nuts, they're in there tackling. Hard ball gets just like you, mate. Um, so it's a, it a huge effort. You know how hard it is to win over here against the Eagles, so we're pretty happy. And a lazy three for you? Just a lazy three, mate. You know how it is. Good work. Uh, isn't that great to see, Tom? We talked about football history earlier, and particularly Sydney football history. Jude Bolton and Adam Goods, 301 games between them. And Jude, of course, second on the all-time games played for Sydney with 325. Just fantastic. That was great TV. Let's get back down to Jude. 
Well, we're here with a man who had 33 possessions, Luke Parker, two goals as well. And you love these conditions, don't you? Yeah, it's not, it's not too bad for me. It slows, slows it down, so I think everyone fumbles a bit, gives me a bit more time to, to get to the contest. So, no, I love, love these conditions. It's just a hard slog. Just, uh, just the team in general, it was a, just a really hard slog. And, and just to put your, I guess, a stamp on it that third term. Yeah, definitely. I think we had a few momentum swings. They probably kicked three in a row. And, I think it was then that the midfield really stood up. Pikey got up in the ruck and it was just more a crash and bash and get, get back on top, a few neutrals, and um, yeah, just get, just get it going our way. And Carlton next week back at the SCG? Yeah, it's not another, another big test, so um, hopefully, hopefully we can keep going. Doing well. Good work, mate. Cheers, buddy. I'm assuming young man, Luke Parker, 22 contested possessions. That's his game, isn't it? That's a career high. Previous personal bets was 17, so terrific game. and. Best player on the ground, I think. I like told you about the lift, didn't I, with Benny McGlynn? It's like a reunion down there. Oh, uh, June Bolton, take got it all. Man. Benny oh, McGlynn, take it away, June. It is the reunion down here. No, we've got the little cannonball. Here's, he's another man who loves these conditions. Benny, a tough, tough day, though. Yeah, it was a hard, hard fight, but um, you know it's good and different by the boys. But um, yeah, the wet weather suits us a little bit, so I've just had parks before, but it was good to uh, get a win. What about the strength of this list? There's some plenty of talent sitting in the in the stands at the moment. Obviously, Tippett was a late withdrawal. Uh, you've still got Hanbury, Shaw to come back in at some stage. Yeah, look, obviously those guys. It's disappointing they're not playing, but you know Jackie Lloyd and Harry Cunningham, they're playing well. Young Z Zachy Jones, unfortunately, went down today. I'm not sure what happened to him, but you know those guys have come in and took the load on and you know, we're looking forward to getting Hanbury and uh, Shorey back after the bye, I guess. And you seem to be relishing that opportunity to play through the midfield this year and uh, in a, another, another big game from you. Yeah, look, I'm enjoying it, so it's good to get around there. It helps Kizer and, and Mac McVay out as well, so it frees them up and it's good to have the rotations through the middle, and, but I'm enjoying being around the ball, taking over your spot, mate. <laughs> Rest up and enjoy the red eye, home. Huh? Yeah, we'll do. Thanks, mate. Cheers. Well, after a performance like that, you say 172 centimetres tall, don't you? He was uh, fantastic, really stood up in these conditions. They're all very good. Parker, probably the best of them. I think three votes to Parker. McGlynn was very good. Josh Kennedy also. It was a contested ball game, and they were the three masters of that craft today. So finally, it was 79 to 51 at Patterson Stadium. Sydney make it 11 straight. Adam Goods plays in game 341 and wins. And tonight, Sydney are on top of the table. A lot of tough stuff here at Patterson Stadium. Here's some of the best stuff of this round. So far in his month as a Tiger, Vickery another chance, rebound out the back. They'll be able to raffle it off. Vickery, <laughs> surely not! Top of the square, came in. Right, and an opportunity to spook out again. Eddie. Eddie's got another one, he's got three. Not his best oh, kick. Oh, everyone. Oh, oh, and Henderson, look at the bounce. Look at him go. He's got oh, the half forward oh. flank and the 50. He owns it. And after two bounces, he must kick a goal. Tired legs, didn't matter. Henderson's got four. McStay couldn't quite. Vickery, well, he could. You can't do that without having a bit of talent. Yeah, very that's lucky. That's deliberate from mine. I would have thought. Good. Oh, yes. <laughs> what a goal. Need some help. Yeah, well done. Mm, got it out wide. He got some help. Yeah, we've got to keep Back running, Patterson. Yeah, Kent's going to go. Off the left boot. It'll be a hell of a goal. It'll be a hell of a goal. Sensational goal. Roost leads back in the race. Huopolo into space. In trouble off balance. Roost a second chance. Can he find a way through? Does better than that. Goes to Gunston. Spills off his boot. Inadvertently came to Cripps. Dragged down by Grundy. Good hand pass from Darling. And they've got the goal. Well done by Shuey. Threw it on the boot. Under siege here, the Saints defence. Kurnow, it opened up for him. Gibbs, handballs to Chris Judd. Judd powering out of the pocket. He's done that before. Chris Judd puts it through. Puts it up in hope. Lynch is down there. Henry floats in, almost stolen from him by Lynch. Bennell opens it up. Kick around the board. Yeah, Chris is a sensation. Just old Sato. Graves down towards half forward from behind oh. Thomas. Yeah. Here, happening at the moment, the Bombers bowl each other over. Here's White, he's got Wingard on one side and Gray on the other. And he says, guess what? You two guys are good, but I'm bad. Who 
Very bleak out there at Patterson Stadium. Final score 10 19 to 7 9. Baz, you voted in this award earlier today. And the man with a very impressive trophy at the back is Luke Parker, Tom, the HMAS Sydney 2 best on ground trophy. No doubt he was the best player on the ground. 32 to 33 disposals, 22 contested, and he's going to need a extra seat on the flight back to take that cannon home with him. What about the live ladder? Sydney on top of the table tonight. For the first time this year, Dan and they are a game clear. Uh, this time last year playing terrific football as well. They may look at managing their list come September now. So very well placed for a serious assault at the flag. Fremantle making a run there back in fourth spot as you can see. They've benefited from the weekend. Hawthorne with so many injury woes. And Port, mini slump do you think? A little slump. They've lost uh, slump. three from four I think it is now. And the Crows Hawthorne Friday night at Adelaide Oval is a massive game. The Crows just got that glimmer to get into eighth spot and the Hawks need to consolidate. Well, we came here to celebrate what he had done in football. The rain is lashing the ground now. Generally, didn't get much during the game. Enjoyed the game very much. Sydney on top of the table, and they win by 28 points. Thanks for your company. This has been Sunday Football.